Hey, Joe Escobedo here, and today I'll be answering your burning content marketing questions. Now, these questions were ones given to me at last night's General Assembly panel. So if you missed that, stay tuned. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Joe Escobedo. I am a content strategy trainer and advisor to Fortune 500 companies. I'm also the co-author of the book Asian Growth Stories. But let's dive in. So the first question is, how do you define content marketing? And why do you think it's important? Well, to understand content marketing, you have to understand the difference between pull versus push marketing. So push marketing is traditionally what we call advertising. So you're pushing your message onto your audience. Whereas with pull marketing, you are getting your audience to come to you through valuable content. And that's essentially content marketing in a nutshell. Providing valuable content that will, one, capture their interest, you know, help differentiate you versus your competitors, and ultimately help convert those audiences into customers. So why is it so important? Well, I have built my entire career on content marketing. This video you're watching right now is part of my content marketing strategy. So I would say that, you know, between myself and my clients, you can really, really create a very, very powerful brand in a very cost-effective manner through content marketing. So next, next question is, there's a huge amount of content every day. How do you make your content stand out? Any tips, do's and don'ts? So for me, I try to avoid the clickbaity headlines at all costs. You know, like the top 10 ways to do X, Y, Z. Now the reason for that is because every single brand, it seems like, is having similar headlines. So what really makes mine stand out? So one thing I realized when I was writing for Forbes is that if you incorporate people into your story, if you incorporate their stories into your headline, that can be a very, very powerful way of standing out uh, for your content. So give an example, one of my top performing Forbes pieces of all time was how the CEO of TWG built a $90 million brand out of Singapore. Now two things I think went well here. The first is I was telling a specific story, so in this case it is about the CEO of TWG. And also one thing I found quite helpful is including numbers but not the way you generally think about it. So in this case, I would say that you know, I built a $90 million brand. So 90 million is the, you know, the number there. But if you notice, I didn't place it at the beginning and I didn't place it in a way where it sounds clickbaity. It sounds like it's naturally part of the story, which makes it more natural and more compelling. So remember, when it comes to telling stories, People relate to people. Let me repeat that. People relate to people more than they do your product, your service, your brand. And I can tell you because even years after I've written those Forbes articles, people still come to me and they say, hey, I remember that story about that person. You know, it's something I could relate to. And therefore, it's something I remembered. So never underestimate the power of using real people in your content. So next question is what type of content content do you consider to be the most effective these days? So unfortunately there's no one size fits all approach when it comes to content. To answer that question I always, you know, try to find out what is my audience doing? What type of content are they consuming? So is it text? Is it visuals? Is it videos? What kind of stuff do they find interesting? So for me, I generally go out and ask my audience. I say, okay, what type of content would you like me to create more of? And in this case, there was an overwhelming demand for video. Hence why I'm doing this video right now. So it's all about listening to your audience and finding out what type of content they'd like to consume. Now, when it comes to video, let's say video is performing quite well, there's I guess two types of video. So there's long form video, 
So I usually do these through you know a YouTube live or a webinar, and then there's short video. So I usually take that YouTube live video, and I will break it down into mini videos that I can distribute via my newsletter, via my social channels. So that means I don't have to create new um, videos. I can leverage what I've already done. So videos can be quite powerful. My advice is you don't have to go full on hire a video production company. Start small, grab your phone, whatever small recording device you have and use that first. Once you feel more comfortable, then you know, see what's working. If that is the case and you want to pump more money into video production, then go ahead. But start small. Next question is how should I divide resources, time, money, between creating content and distribution? So once again, I don't have a breakdown per se, but I would say that when it comes to the content creation portion, spend a decent amount of time on your headlines. Not only your headlines, but your, thumb your thumbnail images if it's for videos. Now the reason for that is if you have a video or a thumbnail image that's so enticing and people click that, that is going to help you generate organic reach. Whether it's on Google for SEO purposes, if someone is clicking um, on YouTube, all of these are indicators to the specific platforms that people want to read or watch this type of content. So keep that in mind when you are developing your own. Next question, is there a difference between B2C and B2B marketing? I would say absolutely. And the main difference is that B2B marketing generally has a longer sales cycle. So for example, a B2B sales cycle could take anywhere from three months to three years. Whereas B2C is generally you know, quite short. Like I could buy something off of Amazon right now. So for me, it's like a five minute uh, buying you know, process. So because of that complexity or that duration for B2B, you really have to involve uh, content that nurtures your audience. So content like you know your email newsletters, events, other ways to keep them informed, educated, and part of the process before they make that ultimate purchase decision. Next question is how do you actually measure the success of content? Now there are a bunch of different ways you can do that, but I would say always start with mapping out your KPIs. So what is it that you want to achieve? Because a lot of content marketers just create content for the sake of creating content. So if that's the case, you're not really doing content marketing, you're doing content creation. Content marketing is something that has a business impact. But I would say for me personally, when I look at the success of content marketing, or at least when I'm evaluating it, I'll look at it from short-term and long-term perspective. So from a short-term perspective, I want my content to be sparking a conversation. I want to be starting a dialogue. So I want, don't want just to see people just go like, like, like. I want them to ask questions. I want them to share their own feedback, their own kind of insights. That for me is most important. And then long-term perspective, I want to find out, is it bringing clients to me? So for example, I ask my clients, how did you hear about me? And a lot of the times they'll say, oh, I read your article on Forbes, then I watched your video on LinkedIn, and then I subscribed for your newsletter, and then I decided, you know, I wanted to work with you. So all of these give me an indication of what type of content, what type of channels is working best for my business. Next question is, can you share with us what are the tools you use um, in content marketing? So for content ideation, when I'm trying to think of topics, I will leverage a tool called answerthepublic.com. And what this does is it allows you to put in a keyword and it'll bring up the most commonly asked questions around that keyword. So who, what, where, when, why, how. So this gives me an indication of what are the questions that people are having around a particular keyword? And then from there, all I have to do is go and create that content to answer that question. 
So one of my favorite tools for video creation is Lumen 5 and I talk a lot about this tool during my trainings because it can save you a lot of time and what this tool does is you can essentially convert say a blog article so you copy and paste that plug it into the platform and it will auto generate a video or create a video based on IA the understanding of the text it will place the right visuals so it's very very smart and effective way to create videos for analysis you know if you're just getting started there's nothing wrong with good old-fashioned Google Analytics you can actually get a wealth of information from there sometimes too much information but you know at least it give you an indication of what types of content is performing well in terms of topics which channels are driving traffic and even conversions so Google Analytics can be very powerful and it's often an underutilized tool next question is how what do you consider to be the biggest trends in content marketing this year so once again I don't like commenting on trends but one thing that I've seen at least on LinkedIn in the B2B community is the rise of video so ever since you know LinkedIn introduced native videos and now video ads on the platform you've really seen a lot of people leverage those videos um, so I think that is quite an exciting development at least in the B2B space and I see you know the engagement that's taking place um, so companies that are using videos not only to um, get more customers but are using it as a employer branding tool to showcase their co company culture in order to retain and attract the top talent so it's interesting to see how the different departments are using video so how do you think AI is affecting content creation and distribution. So to be honest, I haven't seen that many tools leveraging AI in the content marketing space. I mean, I'm always on the lookout for some. So if you know of any, let me know in the comments. But one of the tools, as I mentioned before, is Lumen5 that I think does an incredible job of leveraging AI to create content. Now it's interesting to see if there'll be any technologies that'll be able to use that for text. Um, I know a couple emerging ones, but let me know yours, um, at least your favorites, in the comments. So once again, uh, next question is, where do you see content marketing and the role in the next five to ten years? So I always tell you know, the media if they're interviewing me, I'm no fortune teller, so I generally don't make predictions. But I would love to see more AI related tools that are helping with not only the creation but the ideation and the analysis when it comes to content marketing. Next question is where do you get your inspiration? So my inspiration is very clear. I get all my inspiration from my audience. And what do I mean by that? I'm constantly speaking with them to find out what are the biggest challenges, what's keeping them up at night and majority of my content revolves around those questions. So always start with your audience and find out what kind of content they're actually looking for. Next question is, what are the best sources to learn about content marketing and get relevant information about this field? What do influencers or what influencers do you follow or communities in Singapore? What's well, a really good question? I'm always on the lookout for good resources, and I can't say that I have a favorite. Um, I know Content Marketing Institute does a lot in terms of educational pieces on content marketing, HubSpot too. Um, but I would say people, one of my favorite people to follow, at least in Singapore, is Daniel Cooley. Um, he is the content marketing evangelist at LinkedIn, and Daniel is one of the sharpest you know content marketers I know um, and also I love that he's constantly sharing research or research and insights that he's able to pull from LinkedIn which is very very helpful for a lot of B2B marketers I'll jump real quick to the skill sets so what are the skill sets and talents required for an organization to excel in content marketing 
So Gary V provides a pretty good structure for this. He says that, you know, it, it really requires a mix of creative and analytical skills. Um, so, oh, that's more in terms of the team, excuse me. So when you're building your team, you need someone who, you know, possesses both creative and analytical skills. Someone who understands the business. As I mentioned before, that's really the biggest difference between content creators and content marketers. And if you're using content from a business perspective, if you want more revenue, more clients, then get you a content marketer, not necessarily a content creator. Next question is, what is the ideal team setup for content marketing? So I mentioned Gary Vee has a pretty good setup. He suggests that you have a writer, designer, someone who does paid and analytics, and a video person. But if you're just starting out, find out what talents you actually need before outsourcing. So you may have someone you know, in your company who's a great writer. If they are keen to do so, leverage them before you go out and start outsour outsourcing a lot of your content creation. So the final key takeaway here is, it sounds very cliche, but really put yourself in your audience's shoes. That'll help you create the most effective content for your audience, and it'll answer all the questions what topics should I be writing about? What channels should I be using? If you constantly have them in mind, you will be effective in your content marketing efforts. So as always, if you liked this video, which I hope you did, be sure to subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, like, share, and most importantly, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I wanna be able to you know, start that dialogue with you, so please let me know what you thought of this video. Thanks, I will see you next time.